and we're live to the nation that's it so we're on now um good evening is anyone with us yet we're seen then as on this side where um oh hang on that might be there we go kerry's with us hi kerry hello kerry you're right damien damien philip philip good evening adrian nice to see you all hi, hi. kerry we're just gonna gonna give it a couple of minutes um hi david um to wait for people dean hi dean dean from sunny Bude. <laughs> so um while we're waiting for people to join um just a little bit of a heads up really this is the first uh live stream brian and i have ever done um apart from that one i did about an hour ago just to test that it did work so you'll have to bear with us a little bit we're not um we're not media savvy people we've uh, never been on tv we're just going to do the best we can really um so while yeah people will just join and join us um i guess in the next couple of minutes um i guess we'll kick things off by um just introducing ourselves and what we're doing and why we've set up this facebook page um so essentially brian and i um our ADIs. Um, we've been in the industry quite a number of years now. We come from a similar background and we live within um, two or three miles of one another. A lot of you on here know us. Um, one thing we, uh, the both of us recognize living where we do is there's a limited amount of um, training resource uh, for ADIs and PDIs. Um, so we got our heads together and we decided we wanted to support our PDIs, ADIs across the Southwest um, in helping them develop their careers, helping them continue to be successful. We understand it can be quite a stressful industry to be in and it's also quite a lonely industry to be in um, if you're on your own and um, trying to work out what you do with your CPD, um, especially now with the um, well, it's been around for a couple of years now, but the standard check test can be a stressful time for all of us. So we wanted to set something up to help support you guys um, and help you be successful in your standard check tests and any other continual professional development that you felt um, you needed. So that's why we've set up the page. Um, occasionally, we'll post what we hope is useful information for you all to read. Um, if tonight goes well, well, we'll probably do the odd um, live stream, um, varying different topics, and uh, we'll go from there. Brian. Hi, everyone. Firstly, uh, thanks to, we've got 90 members already, so a big thank you to all of you that have joined. Um, it's been incredibly successful, even though it's only been going for a couple of weeks. Uh, I'm putting a couple of posts on each week with some helpful tips, useful information, not just for the standard check test, but also for the um, part three final exam. They're both the same anyway. So um, <clears throat> the idea is obviously to help everyone locally, uh, southwest of, of the country. Tonight, what we thought is we'd kick off with risk management because we know that uh, that's an area that a lot of you um, maybe a bit confused about or certainly have a lots of questions um, regarding instead of us actually presenting what I thought would be a good idea is if you um, just wrote some questions so type away with some questions and we do our very best to answer those questions as for, for fully and thoroughly as we can um, I obviously do this all the time I've only got two learners on my book so I only train PDIs and, and obviously ADIs. So I've got a, a wealth of experience over the last two, three years down here helping local instructors with their standard check tests and um, obviously reaching the standard for their part three exams. So um, I've got a business partnership agreement with Red. For those of you that know me, I know a lot of people that have joined uh, do know me personally because I've been training them or I'll still train them. We also have the academy where we've got um, a number of PDIs working for us now. So um, hopefully the information we share tonight will be of some use to you all. 
uh, but feel free to ask what any question you would like to ask. Uh, but if we can focus on risk management, then then that would be really good. Um, so, there are go on, sorry. So risk, sorry, sorry, Brian. So risk management is a very small, although very important segment of our all-day standard check test uh, training workshop that we have run uh, a couple of times now, and we will be running on an ongoing basis. Um, but it's one that seems to um, confuse some people. Um, and uh, it's where we get most of the questions from. Um, in fact, I found the last standard check test workshop we did a couple of Mondays ago really interesting because um, there seemed to be a, a, a lot of misconceptions which hopefully we can, we can clear up this evening. So normally a workshop would, would be a presentation. Brian and I would be up the front. We'd have, we'd have some slides projected up onto a screen. Um, because of this media, I think um, we felt together that um, it would be it would work better if if you have any questions, um, like Brian just stated there, just to type them up, and we will literally uh, as best we can answer your questions as you as you type them. Um, otherwise, we'll we'll just you know we'll just run through uh, what risk is, what it means uh, in terms uh, in regards to the standard check test and the part three. Um, so yeah, again, if you've got any questions, type them up. We'll see them instantly, and we can answer them um, as they come up. Okay, Brian. Should we? Uh, the first oh, there's five core competencies that uh, make up risk management. Uh, does anyone uh, online at the moment not understand any of them? Uh, be specific. Obviously, the first one is the one that um, everyone seems to have a few problems with. Did the trainer uh, ensure that the customer, as we call them now, they're students, of course, um, did the customer understand fully what is meant by shared responsibility? Does anyone have any questions about that particular core skill at this stage? Don't be shy. <laughs> you know it all. <laughs> well, okay. I think um, until until anyone thinks of a question, I think... Right, we just run the, mo the most important thing with the first core competency is making sure the examiner sitting in the back um, is is going to. It's all about your customer fully understanding what is meant by shared responsibility. So make sure that the conversation you have with your pupil is in front of the examiner and your pupil is involved in that conversation. Instead of just um, making a statement in front of your pupil, try your best to, um, you know, allow your pupil time to explain to you what shared responsibility is. Now, remember that it's not just about making a statement at the beginning of the test. It's not just about defining roles at the beginning. It's about a constant assessment of progress throughout um, the test. If you change your the plan or you change your route or you wish to um, reduce the level of support or increase your level of support, then it is important that you redefine um, responsibility. You reiterate the shared responsibility element of it um, and you discuss it with your customer, pupil, in front of the examiner. That's how you're going to get top marks. For those of you that think if you say the statement at the beginning and you deal with it at the beginning, that's good enough, that's not correct. It needs to be an ongoing throughout the test, um, an assessment of risk, an assessment of that shared responsibility. Does that, anyone have any questions on that? I mean, I think that's probably the best way to kick it off. Is anyone confused about the fact that we need to um, assess um, the responsibility and the shared responsibility throughout the whole test. I think, um, and until a question comes up, Brian, I think I'm wondering whether we could, as we did on our last workshop, use an actual live, real life example of um, where you are agreeing um, with with your client um, what your responsibilities are in, in regards to an actual subject. Like for example, we talked about roundabouts mm. um, on the last standard check test, didn't we? And we we, we, we used the example of um, 
decision making, roundabouts, finding a gap, finding a safe gap in the traffic. Um, and I think that from what I've heard, read, observed, sometimes um, the, and you correct me if I'm wrong, Brian, sometimes a mistakes uh, a mistake would be, so I'm just looking to see if we've got any questions because we're right at the top here. Let's have a look. Um, not being, ah, there we go. Oh, we have. Aha, there we go. We weren't, uh, oh. Evelyn, yes, yeah. good, Gina, hi. So um, specific, the word specific is very important uh, when it comes to your subject. Sure. So I'm scrolling down as we speak. Wayne's here as well. David, hello, David from Good luck tomorrow, Wayne. <laughs> Um, What's the best cover? Come back up. Sorry, we're just okay. Oh, so, we Gary, go. we have a question. Sorry, we're a bit slow. Uh, what's the best way to show the examiner you've covered risk management on your part three? Risk management, as I say, there's five core competencies. It's not just about that first one. Uh, it's very important that um, the support that you agree with your pupil. Um, if they're happy with that support and you do deliver that support so if you you've agreed to a guided step-by-step -step support at the beginning that you constantly assess that support throughout and if you do want to change that support you talk about it now the best way to cover um, all five core competencies in my view is to make sure you're delivering the support that you've both agreed and that you constantly make sure your your pupil is happy with the support, even if every now and then you you ask them, um, you know, that exact question. Giving the correct directions and instructions in good time is part of risk management. So make sure you don't over talk, especially if a fault's occurred. Pick pick the right timing to analyse that fault, because you could lose marks from a risk point of view. If you're, um, you know, if, if you're giving uh, directions late, if you deal with a safety critical incident, make sure you deal with it. Make sure you um, analyze uh, when you can at the nearest and earliest safe place. Flag the fault at the time. Explain why you've uh, verbally or physically intervened at the time and make sure you do, as I say, stop um, somewhere safe. Uh, and um, ask your customer to um, analyze. Kerry, you've asked, is that the dual control? Yes, it is. Make sure on that point you uh, mention, it's, certainly if it's a learner, if it's a full license holder, uh, my, my recommendation, my, my take on it is you don't need to mention the dual controls if you're taking a full license holder. But if you're taking a learner, a beginning beginner, it is important that you mention that you've got dual controls and that you will use them uh, if need be. Remember, dual, dual controls isn't just the clutch and brake. It's the mm. steering, gear stick, and brake. It's any control that you may use to help out in a safety critical uh, scenario. Okay, So it is important you mention that at the beginning, Kerry, dual controls. Uh, and then, obviously, it's important that if you do use the dual controls, you do identify the reasons why you've done it. I think um, I'm going to fill. I'm going to bring the page up. Um, what sort of speak? What's that one there? Ba, 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 um, so, what sort of speak would you give for it? Why okay, not? Wayne. I'll try and. I think what you're asking there is what sort of speech would you give at the beginning? I wouldn't give a speech. I would try. I mean, it's difficult if you don't use it every day. I appreciate that. But I, I tend to think it should be a conversation between yourself and your um, your pupil. I think they need to understand what shared responsibility for risk is all about. And if you're not using it every day, then obviously you will need to have to give a speech. I personally would tell them that they are responsible for the safety of themselves, the safety of all passengers in the car, all road users, including pedestrians. I would then say, as this is a coaching session, um, there's a shared responsibility. You are also, as the, as the driver instructor, as a coach, responsible for their safety and all other passengers in the car, all road users, including pedestrians. And that's when I would then introduce dual controls into the speech, if that's how you feel you want to deal with it. Um, 
try your best to almost involve them. So although you want to get your, your suggestion of speech, I would try and use a Q&A scenario to remember what we've got to prove to get those three points that your, your pupil fully understands what is meant by shared responsibility. So if you just give a speech, how can we prove to the examiner in the back that they fully understood? So the more your, your, the more your pupil um, is involved in that conversation, the better for you and the better marks you will get. Yeah, I think um, we'll come on to Philip's asked a really interesting question here, which we'll, I think we should definitely get on to. Um, so you can do more time. Yeah, so well, just, just going to finish off, um, tag on to what Brian was just saying there. It's, um, it's uh, like, how can, how can I help? You know, how can I help? What level of support do you need or do you want from me? Um, and then from there, you can go on to say, for example, well, um, yeah, I think I'm sort of okay with, for example, uh, decision, decision making. I might need a little bit of help. So you sort of clarify that with them. So would that be a bit of prompting? Or do you want me to just sit here and sort of jump in if you need? Make sure you, whatever, whatever it is that you've decided that you've definitely had, you've got that agreement from your client, customer. And then, and Brian, to correct me if I'm wrong, and then agree the responsibility. So we've agreed now that um, I'm going to prompt you. Um, so we're going to sort of share this responsibility equally, sort of 50 50. Does that, does that sound all right with you? Yes, customer might say yes. Or, you know, or, or can you just explain that to me? What do you mean? So just whatever, wherever it is, whatever level of support, or what we used to call level of support, I still call it that. Um, you agree with the customer and then go on to explain well what that means now in terms of the balance the, the balance of responsibility are we sharing this risk and responsibility um, yes um, if they've decided actually I want to have, I want to have a go at this roundabout now you know, you might have had two or three goes at it and you've, you've worked them up through your levels of support you've agreed on each step what your roles and responsibilities are in concern in content in um in terms of risk sorry we're getting loads of questions um and then they want to have a go independently well okay so you're going to take most of the responsibility here then aren't you yes okay i'll be here obviously you know i'm here to help and guide you i will take i will take a small amount of that but you're going to take this on yes so what whatever it is whatever level of support you both agreed on you then go on to, to discuss what that means in terms of risk. Is that right, Brian? Yeah, yeah, that? yeah uh, that's absolutely spot on. So, Philip, just to, just to answer, does it mean the less you say, the more responsibility the customer has? Yes, to a point, yes, it does. I mean, I use the words lion share responsibility. Mm. So if someone wants to be independent and have a go on their own, then you're giving them the lion share responsibility. So, so long as you've, sorry, Brian, so long as you've uh, agreed that, so, if you've done, for example, an exercise and it was prompted, and in your mind you're thinking, they can do this now, don't just let them drive around again and have a go at it um, without then discussing, without beforehand discussing that with them. No, I've just observed you do that really well without very little help from me. Do you want to, do you, do you still want some help from me? Um, and if they say, no, I'm okay, I'll, I'll go independent on this, that's when you can, you can zip it and you can possibly keep your mouth shut and yes, Give them more responsibility but it has to be agreed before you, you can't just make that decision without discussing it first with the client agreed absolutely yeah spot on. just going to go down now um do we ask lots of questions adrian but if we get the people to say all that then we'll get us better marks uh kerry yes um in actual fact, I'm not sure if Paul uh, Barnett is with us tonight. I'm not sure if he's joined, but he took his part three test quite recently. Mm -hmm. And the um, pupil he took to test actually um, actually defined shared responsibility. And I, I know for a fact he got a very good mark for it. So if you can encourage your pupil to be involved uh, then you will get better marks. And remember, that isn't just about the beginning. We can't reiterate that enough. It's in, it's important that you're doing it constantly. You're resetting the parameters each and every time with the pupil. Um, my part three examiner told yeah. me. I, I can I can Chris uh, Christopher. We've just seen your bit. Yeah. What you got? Obviously, part of risk also is not 
you know, if someone's not ready um, to take on um, independent support, you know, they, you know, they want to have a go, but perhaps they're not ready. It's so important that we don't put too much pressure on them. You're quite right, Christopher. We can lose points for risk management if we're putting someone out of their debt. So you need to recognize that. Focus on the body language. Focus on any, any obviously, anything they say. That's really important. Important, um, but yeah, don't put too much pressure on them. If they want to have a go, there's no reason why you can't let them have a go. Uh, but if they're struggling, then take some of that responsibility back, and that, and that's important as well. Because some people might want to have a go, but in actual fact, uh, they do struggle. So therefore, be ready to jump in. And that's a, a good point. Is that um, just because someone wants to be independent? doesn't mean to say that as their coach you can't give them an increased level of sport if you feel as though they're struggling please do jump in and don't put too much pressure on them adapt uh, what you're doing and that that's very important yeah okay hello paul paul's here paul hi paul got a thumbs up there thank you for joining <laughs> in <laughs> does that does it is that um... is, it, is it enough to ask pupil to explain responsibility and risk thank you and i uh, hi Paula, hope you're hope you're well. Is it enough to ask pupil to explain responsibility and risk? Thank you. And I, it, it's as I say, it's an important part asking them to be involved, but it's not enough. No, we we need to we need to assess it throughout the whole session. So yeah, at the beginning, by all means, try and encourage your pupil to explain what responsibility, shared responsibility, is all about. Um, ask them to explain risk. Give them, uh, get, ask them to give you some examples about risk. But you know, remember, it isn't just about the beginning. It's important that we constantly assess how they're getting on. We're constantly assessing their progress. Okay. Uh, do, 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 Kerry. And how did that go? Got you, Paul. <laughs> Not sure what you mean there, Kerry. I defined through whole oh. exam. Uh, Paul, okay. yeah, so Paul, I think you've you've supported, you've defined it through the whole exam, and um, I think you got a good mark for that. Hopefully, he's not going to say one. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, I think you got a good mark for that. And yes, his his pupil that he took was um, certainly fully understood what um, shared responsibility was. I, I was in the back of the car with him um, on a number of occasions leading up to his part three, and. Um, she certainly did know exactly what was meant by shared responsibility. I don't know, we seem to be, unless anybody's got any other questions, I'm wondering whether we, do, we, do you want to, I know we didn't plan this, but do you want to talk about safety critical or? Yeah, does anyone want um, to ask anything about, so it is part of risk management, there's five core competencies. Um, is there anything um, about safety critical anyone wants to run over, any questions? It really is all in line with what we've been talking, really. You know, if someone is struggling um, and you you identify that there's a potential safety critical incident about to occur, then you're going to verbally or physically intervene. Remember, verbally intervening is just as important that you, um, you analyze for that as well. Also remember, and maybe some of you don't know this, that um, the safety critical incident doesn't have to involve you doesn't have to involve you and your learner. It can involve any other cars on no. the road. If you That's see important. or witness something in front of you uh, that your pupil has seen, then there's no reason why you can't pull over and analyze uh, a completely separate incident. And and that is a great opportunity. I say great, it would be un, you know, unfortunate for somebody if you witness something like that, but a great opportunity for you to score points um, this happened to me, funny enough, I didn't even mention this to, to Brian, um, on a lesson today, this happened to me, we actually witnessed an accident and it gave me an opportunity to ask my clients to pull into the, the, the we were approaching a car park, uh, the retail park car park at the time, so I was able to get, get him in there, um, get him to do his forward bay park and then discuss what had just happened. We talked a little bit about uh, defensive driving, we talked about eye contact, we talked about where it was basically one uh, a car pulled out of a junction right in front of another car, and there was, there was a T-bone incident. So um, that was an, ex an opportunity, a learning opportunity um, for me to have a discussion with my client about that. So, yeah, it isn't, as Brian has um, pointed out, that it doesn't necessarily have to be 
you're safety critical. It could be something else, something else that you have observed. Hello, Beverly. Um, any questions? Any questions about that? Safety critical. Anything else? Anyone still a bit unsure about the shared responsibility? Ooh. Hang on. <laughs> Just having some technical. That's all right. I think Paul's added. I'm, I'm assuming you can all see each other's comments. I'm, I'm, we're not really sure. We think you can. Yeah, this Kerry, is... I think Paul's um, commented uh, in response to your question. Um, anyone else uh, maybe been on a standard check test recently that can even share with the group? Because at the end of the day, it's, it's all about us helping each other. Anyone else want to um, give some feedback? There's another comment coming. Okay. Saw a car attempting to enter a no entry road at traffic lights with police car behind. Arsenal and how other sides might have helped her not to do. So that that actually that 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 comment that you made, Paula, brings me on to what you've all got to understand is if you analyze, can you just scroll back down? Yep. This way or that way? Yeah, that's just that one there. Yeah, sorry. If you analyze, if you use examples uh, in a safety critical situation, remember you're going to get points elsewhere. There are other core skills that you're going to get points for. So, you know, the more aware of your surroundings and the more examples and learning opportunities you use, not just for safety critical, I know we're talking about risk management tonight, but what Paula's saying there is she's asking the learner about signs and, and other ways of dealing with a particular incident will get you points elsewhere and if you look down the 17 core competencies there is one specific to that where you would use examples or learning opportunities to help yeah to help to help your pupil you want to scroll down there's yeah. some more i think from this is very high thank, thank you gina Martin, use another driver's thoughts for them there are plenty of opportunities around so yeah thank you christopher um thanks for your input um you know that that's one area, and and again, it's not risk management. It's one area that um, a lot of ADIs and PDIs fall down on, is that they don't use opportunities, and it is important. You know, it's going around around us every day when we're driving, whatever subject topic you're you're covering. You know, just be aware of everything. Remember, one of the core competencies within the risk management is being aware of your surroundings and your pupils' actions. So actually, a good way of getting three out of three is to actually bring examples in from other vehicles, other road users. Not only will you get points for that particular skill, but obviously it's a risk management skill as well. So uh, a good comment there by Christopher, and it's good to see that you are maybe, uh, using those plenty of options. And of course, you pass first go, so well done. Maybe if they're, if they're comfortable with this, maybe get them to, you know, for example, we were talking earlier about um, defensive driving and... Um, eye contact with uh, cars waiting to emerge from junctions as you're approaching them, maybe to get them to do a bit of commentary for you, see if they point out the fact that the driver is maybe not looking in our direction, maybe we can't might make eye contact with them, um, just to get them thinking about um, that potential risk. Um, Try, uh, one, one thing I will just touch on bef before we sort of conclude is, Try your best, and it's, it, you're always trying to impress in a test situation, and I, no doubt you'll be overthinking things. Try not to overthink things. You know, at the end of the day, you're all very good driving instructors. Just try and focus on how you do it to the best of your ability. Don't overthink things. But one of the one of the faults that a lot of people make is they try and overanalyze on the move. You know, a fault occurs. It's important that we identify the fault, but try your best to get the timing right for your analysis. Because if you don't, you can lose marks for risk management. If you're still analysing a fault and a roundabout's coming up and you haven't dealt with that or you're not given the correct um, level of support as you approach that roundabout, you're going to lose points in risk management. So although we're keen to score points, we can very easily lose points if we're, um, we're not focused on what's going on around us. So... Just try your best to, yes, analyze, but make sure the timing of that analysis is right as well. And I know that's um, feedback from ex senior examiners that sometimes we, we can try too hard. When we start, um, oh, some more questions coming up. Mm -hmm. Kerry. 
tend to, uh, that's Kerry. So uh, I find cause to do this often in my lesson, but my students tend to notice things and, and talk to me. So they are, they are close. They are too close, no signs. Um, I think you uh, Kerry, I think, are you referring to the, the, the previous conversation about uh, picking examples and learning opportunities? Can you just clarify that for us, please? Yeah. So Wayne, don't be nervous. You'll be fine. Yeah. You'll be fine. Just be yourself. Yeah. I think Wayne. Um, Thanks, Paul. That's um, yeah. So I flag straight away if a fork. That's crucial, guys. Absolutely. Absolutely crucial. Flag straight away. Yeah. That's if something that um, I've seen. I've seen with ADIs is they see a fork. Um, they don't flag it. They don't mention it. They're, they're half a mile, a mile down the road before they're actually. Do you remember that fork back there? And by that time, the pupils completely has no idea what you're talking about it's it's absolutely critical that you um, we're, we're now going into fault analysis now but it's all linked you've got to idea you've got to identify ID that fault with your client as and when it happens and then if you you know if you can't deal with it there and then at least you flagged it it they'll remember it um, if you wait you know if you wait a couple of minutes two minutes five minutes down the road when you've pulled them over it's, it's too late they've, they've forgotten so I know that's sort of coming slightly off topic, but that's something. I think we, we made you nervous, Wayne. Don't be nervous. Don't yeah. overthink anything. Just be yourself, okay? Wayne's got a couple of questions uh, which we'll, we can take offline. With okay. Wayne, we will talk to you about some of the other questions you've sent me uh, yesterday and today about tomorrow. Um, I'll, I've got a chance. Give us, give us a call, Wayne. We'll, we'll give you a call if you've got a spare 15 minutes. We'll give you a call in a minute when, when we yeah. go off there. This uh, is really useful. Thank you, man. Thanks very much. Thanks. Predicted. Okay. <laughs> Predictive technology. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's anyone else want to ask anything? Because obviously we're we're close it. If there's no other questions, um, do you want to close it? Yeah. So um, we'll wait to see if any more questions come in. But this, you know, this is obviously, you know, what is it? Half an hour, half an hour session over over video, where where we're not face to face. Um, it's a little bit limiting, but I think quite also quite useful. <laughs> um, and we'll we'll try and do these as regularly as we can. We'll pick what we think will be useful subjects. These, as I said to you, will be um, small segments of of our workshop. Um, but, you know, obviously very small when, when we're face to face in in a, in a in a room it's much easier but I think that this is a way for getting a, a group of people together without us having to leave our homes and to cover um, some key subjects so we'll do this we we'll do this regularly um, I know some of you in fact quite a lot of you are local we will be running um, our standard check test workshops regularly um, so if you feel the need um, by all means come along um, yeah Thank you, David. Thank you for um, all your comments. Da I just get it. David Friedman actually trained me um, all those years ago, and uh, so you're to blame, David. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. And uh, David's all about Peterborough. And um, good luck, David. Thanks for attending. It's really nice to to see and hear from you. Um, I mean, if anyone knows um, any ADIs in the southwest that perhaps don't know about us, so it's only been going two weeks, so. You know, please spread the word because it is to help um, to help you all. Uh, and if we can all share share the information and knowledge we have between us, then we we can only improve, only can improve as a group. Yes, Gene has just reminded me we um we have got a standard check test workshop running on the twenty second of this month. Gina's coming along. Thank you very much, Gina. It's nice to have you back in the country, by the way. Gina seems to always be on holiday when I when I look at her Facebook. <laughs> um, so yeah, it'd be good to, to meet you, Gina. And um, we are running, uh, yeah, we're running that standard check test uh, workshop on the twenty second here in Launceston at Launceston Golf Club. So if anyone wants to come along to that, just message either myself or Brian, and we can book you in. We've got, I think we're about half four at the moment. Yeah, we've got we? some so spaces. I think um, we've got about so, yeah. six or seven seats left. We've got a bigger venue now, so we can take more. Yeah, that does include lunch as well, so you don't have to bring your lunch. And let's see now. <laughs> <laughs> Ray, oh, you've missed, you've missed it, Ray. Mike, nice to meet you. No, oh, Mike, how you doing, Mike? All right. Um, yeah, we're going to have to wrap things up a little bit because my wife's going to come in in a minute and she's going to want to <laughs> put the tea on. And I'm going to get kicked out. <laughs> but... Um, 
Uh, some more here back in sunny, yeah, Gina. Hi, in sunny Cornwall. I'm coming. Hello, yeah. Mike. Kerry's coming to the workshop. Um, best yeah, of luck. good luck to Damien tomorrow. Oh, uh, Damien, yeah, 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 good go luck, on, mate. Go and smash it, absolutely. Yeah, good luck, good luck. Brilliant. Yeah, no you've pressure. got pressure now because <laughs> yeah. everyone knows now, Damien. <laughs> Um, David's got one on the 2nd of April, fingers crossed. Yeah, good luck. Good luck, mate. Yeah, I'm sure you'll absolutely nail it, knowing you. Um, yeah, so we're going to start to wrap things up now, but um, if you've got any questions that suddenly pop into your head once we go offline, um, you can message Brian or I over the, over the, the Facebook page. Um, we'll be in Launson on the 22nd. Uh, it's an all-day event. Um, and we'll post um, future events. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna sort of broaden our subject matter um, a little bit. Um, not just stick to standard check test training. We're gonna, we're gonna be running um, tr uh, workshops on helping uh, those with autism on the autistic spectrum, um, ADHD, learning difficulties, behavioural difficulties in general. That one we haven't set in the diary yet. We've got some guest speakers coming along who've confirmed three guest speakers. Um, two um, are mothers of uh, clients that I uh, actually took through to test, um, one last year and one this year. Um, one of the mothers is actually a, a, uh, used to presenting at various different uh, events. So it should be quite interesting to hear from her. Both her sons are autistic. Uh, we're going to do an event uh, covering drug driving. We're going to do a first aid course. All these um, events, we have the content, we have the guests, the guest speakers. We just need to agree the dates, really, um, Brian and I. And if any of you are interested in anything other than uh, standard check test training, um, CPD, then um, we'll let you know about it. Um, there's some more coming in here. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Good luck Wednesday, David. We'll be rooting for you. Gina's given us a weather forecast. I'll be interested on autism. Okay, Jane, we'll let you know. Yeah, I think, I think we're, we're going to be um, possibly May for that. Yeah, maybe possibly first May. second first second week in May. I think we're going to do the first aid one first. First in April. First aid. We've got the trainer um, lined up. I'm um, in the middle of I'm in the middle of um, the presentation for the autism. Uh, course, so um, we, we will check with the venue and we will try and get it arranged ASAP. The the the, uh, the, the one the workshop that includes autism because there'll be an, there'll be a range of different um, subjects on that day might take us a little bit longer because we're liaising closely with um, our two parents and we've also got one of my um, ex clients who literally passed about three weeks ago. He's really keen to come along and talk to a group about how. The process of him uh, learning to drive. Um, I was his second instructor, um, and he wants to talk about his um, his experiences with um, two different instructors. His experiences on the test as well, how he found that. Just his his whole sort of process of of start to finish um, learning to drive. So um, we just need to liaise with those guys and just make sure that we've got the content uh, right and you know with them um so we may be like, like brian said we may be looking at may for that one um the first day one's a little bit more simpler for us to organize because we're just dealing with one trainer um signs up Come on, you yeah. <laughs> yeah hope you're coming to my end of season time. barbecue Wayne. Um, yeah dys dyslexia is, is chris isn't it yeah chris, chris yeah chris um dyslexia is um another well that will be included we've, we've obviously we've spoken quite a lot about autism but we've mentioned autism uh, more than once but we are going to be dealing with a range of subjects to help um, help hopefully you guys when you have the opportunity to take on a client that may have um, a learning difficulty ADHD autism um, and we, we want to bring some people in that um, have got a more specialist in that field. We, we, I can only talk about my experiences um, as other drive instructors. I know Nay that's joined us also recently had um, a client um, on the autistic spectrum. So we can bring we can bring our experiences to the to the workshop 
um, but, but we're going to be relying quite heavily on our on our the specialists we're going to bring in who happen to be parents of autistic children. So yeah, we'll let you know about those dates. Um, right, I think I think we're going to wrap it up now. Unless anyone's got anything else to say, if you have got anything else to say, ask questions. Um, we'll we'll like do say, it again. We're, we're, we'll probably we'll do, do it this again, again in a, or in a private few message weeks us. Time or uh, we'll let you all know. Yeah. All right then. Thanks everyone. Thanks for all attending, and Take care. Uh, yeah, have a good week, and we'll see you soon. Thanks, guys. Bye now.